Northern Mockingbird, Mimus polyglottos, 9 inches, 23 centimeters. The Northern Mockingbird is one of the mimic thrushes, a family of excellent songsters with an ability to mimic other birds' songs. Other members of the mimic thrush family include the gray catbird as well as all of our other thrasher species. Mimic thrushes are closely related to the thrushes, but typically have longer tails and often longer decurved bills than the true thrushes. Of course, the most versatile and impressive mimic of all is the northern mockingbird, whose scientific name, Mimus polyglottos, translates to many-tongued mimic. The name northern mockingbird is used to differentiate our mockingbird, the most northern of its kind, from the many other mockingbird species that live in the New World tropics. A long, slender gray, black and white bird, the northern mockingbird is slimmer and longer tailed than the American robin. Large white patches on the wings and tail are conspicuous in flight. The northern mockingbird uses these white patches for two primary purposes, to startle insects into moving as it forages on the ground, and to attract attention when it leaps into the air during the male's territorial singing. From a distance, the northern mockingbird might be confused with one of our two shrike species, but the mocker lacks the shrike's bold black eye mask and thicker hooked bill. Mocker bills are relatively slender and only slightly curved. Traditionally associated with the southern United States, the northern mockingbird is expanding its range northward at a remarkable rate. Milder winters and the abundance of berry and fruit-producing plants in ornamental landscaping are credited with assisting the mockingbird in its northward expansion. Mockers prefer brushy, brambly habitat for nesting, but can often be seen foraging on grassy lawns in urban parks and backyards. They are common along roadsides and woodland edges. In summer, they eat primarily insects. They switch to fruit when cold weather makes insects hard to find. It is the northern mockingbird's voice that most distinguishes it from other birds. The song is a varied, prolonged succession of notes and phrases, each of which the bird may repeat from three to a half dozen times before changing to a new phrase. Among our widespread mimids, three species in the east can often be heard at the same time in the same place, northern mockingbird, brown thrasher, and gray catbird. Experienced birdwatchers know how to tell the similar sounding songs apart by the amount of repetition in them. The northern mockingbird has the unique habit of repeating phrases three times or more, while the brown thrasher typically repeats phrases just twice. The gray catbird usually sings each phrase just one time. Mockingbirds mix a variety of imitations of other birds' songs with distinctive phrases of their own. They may also imitate non-bird sounds such as car alarms and telephone rings. Let's listen to a mockingbird singing a variety of other birds' songs. In summer, mockingbirds often sing on nights with bright moonlight. These nighttime crooners are thought to be young, unmated males who are burning the midnight oil in hopes of attracting a mate. Mockers commonly give two other calls, both short, a loud chack and a nasal chair. One of the reasons for the northern mockingbird's abundance may be its aggressive territoriality. During the nesting season, mockers are known to attack creatures that invade the immediate area of their nest, including domestic cats and dogs, and even people. The mocker will swoop down and deliver a hard peck to the head or back, an attack that is intended primarily as a scare tactic. In winter, mockingbirds will aggressively defend a reliable food source from all other birds. 
As the northern mockingbird expands its range to the north and west, more of us will be able to enjoy the music made by this many-tongued mimic. <laughs>